Hi, I'm George Fry. And I'm Bailey Stover. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of RBHS Book Talk. Today we will be discussing The Overachievers, written by acclaimed journalist and Yale graduate Alexandra Robbins. Honestly, an overachiever herself, I'd say. Definitely. This book is an expose highlighting the pressure to succeed students are faced with both in America's society and worldwide. In the 21st century, pressure among students has heightened exponentially, especially at self-described overachieving schools like Walt Whitman High School in Bethesda, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. Whitman has consistently been ranked among one of the nation's highest achieving schools, and Bethesda constantly falls under the America's Smartest Cities list. This is exemplified throughout the book and the students Robin speaks with and observes both on and off campus. She followed students who illustrated the different personality types of overachievers in American society. There was Julie, the superstar, Audrey, the perfectionist, A.P. Frank, the workhorse, Sam, the teacher's pet, Taylor, the popular girl, C.J., the flirt, Ryland, the slacker, Pete, the meathead, and the ever-mysterious stealth overachiever, as well as the multitude of students that Robbins spoke with from all across the country. Among these subjects of the story, the one that truly shocked me the most had to be A.P. Frank. I mean, he was just this teenager who wanted to do well in school, but also have a social life. But his mother and pressures from society essentially kept him chained to a desk. His mother was almost like an overseer, really, just this omnipresent woman who truthfully was just straight up abusive. She wouldn't let him talk to other people or do anything besides study, which to me just seems like she's majorly overstepping her boundaries as a parent. I mean, sure. Parents should be making sure their kids are doing well in school, but I feel like that she is what you would call a prison guard parent, which is a parenting style which seems to be becoming ever more popular in the United States. However, for many years it has also been present in China, Korea, Japan, and India, and students in those countries have even been known to commit suicide when they were young, young children because they had failed small exams. I agree. The idea of prison guard parenting has become too much of a social norm in our society. The concept that a child as young as seven years of age would be under so much pressure from society and from his or her parents that they felt the only escape after failing a minor test was to kill themselves, that's absurd. Love should be given unconditionally from a parent to a child, but the pressure to get into a Ivy League college or other prestigious academic or social achievement is putting children in a position where they are forced to go to extreme measures, staying up for hours on end, not sleeping, not eating, not enjoying their childhood, just to please the unrealistic expectations that their parents have for them. This, you know, I'd even go so far as to say that there's a mentality among teenagers, including myself, and I'd also assume you, that it's either the best or nothing, which honestly, when you think about it, is such a self-destructive mindset. It conditions students into having borderline breakdowns when they don't get the score they aimed for. I mean, I'd say, quote unquote, to try your best is such a subjective term nowadays. This concept can mean a multitude of things, ranging for some people from giving up without applying themselves or putting any effort into an assignment, while for others, like us, it could go as far as to redoing assignments multiple times just to get that last point, or staying up for 24 hours straight, sometimes more than that, to get an A on a test that is in a course that you don't care about. What this book really also conveys I mean, it's not the main idea, but I certainly think it's interesting, is the idea of going from, I guess, what you would call a cycle of going from bad neighborhoods and bad schools to a life of crime. You can really see this in areas like Chicago, Philadelphia, and even other parts of D.C. close to where this is taking place. The areas really almost serve as kind of a juxtaposition to what is taking place in Bethesda. This not only shows the wealth disparity in the United States, it also illustrates the education gap that has been created for hundreds of years. While there are many cases of students in low income and poor education areas that do push themselves to receive a higher education at a prestigious school, often these kids don't have the access to resources such as computers or one-on-one teaching or tutoring that would be necessary for them to keep up with their peers who live more privileged lives, like the students in Bethesda. 
unfortunately, that's the way it seems to be. It's essentially a cycle of what Robbins will call, and I'm paraphrasing, school to jail. I get what you mean. With both of these systems, you can see that there's something critically wrong in our society. With rougher or less affluent communities, the topic in question is not what school you're getting into. It's the mere quality and access of education that children are receiving daily. While more affluent and higher income communities live in a culture where the pressure to receive a high level Ivy League education is enough to push an individual past their breaking point, even so far as committing suicide. Either way, both of these systems aren't exactly the idealist vision of what American education is and should be. However, something I have to ask is, what did it take away, what did you personally take away from this book as a high school student, particularly one who I'd call an overachiever? Well, I am a high achieving student, and I was able to see a bit of myself in each of the characters that Robbins included. I put a lot of pressure on myself to do well in school, much like Audrey and Julie, but I also hope to be laid back and find a balance in my life, like Pete. The biggest takeaway from reading The Overachievers was that success isn't everything there is to high school or to life. It's more important to be a healthy, happy, confident, and sane human being than to graduate with a 4-0 and get into an Ivy League college to pursue a career that I am not passionate about. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Either way, that's all the time we have. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast of RBHS Book Talk, and we'll tune in next week. Thanks.